It's another Pac-12 women's basketball chat, and we're talking to Oregon State guard Talia Von Olhoff. And coming off a double-double weekend, you had two of them, both against your rival, Oregon. 23 points for you, eight rebounds in that one, and uh, 19 in the first half. What did it feel like in that first half when you basically couldn't miss? Yeah, um, I kind of had a feeling during warm-ups that it was going to be a good shooting day for me. Um, I knew I was going to be playing off the ball more. That was kind of the plan going in. Um, Emily Codding kind of stepped up to play point guard because uh, I didn't get any shots in the first half um, of the first game. So I kind of wanted to get going early. Um, so yeah, I was hitting shots and then they kind of took my shots away a little bit more in the second half. So we adjusted and my teammates stepped up big. So it was just a really fun game overall. And a, a tough weekend for sure. It is not easy to win in Eugene. How mm-hmm. did it feel to win in Eugene? Yeah, it was really cool, especially last year, you know, playing in and Matthew Knight in front of no fans was kind of weird. So to have a packed gym and then to get the win on their home floor is definitely super special. And this is where you want to be playing your best basketball. There are always high expectations out of OSU since Scott Ruick took over in Corvallis. What are you guys talking about as a team in terms of believing you're a top team? How do you keep this momentum going? Yeah, this is definitely a really big win for us to get that momentum going, um, going into the rest of Pac-12 play and then in the postseason, but we've just been focusing a lot on consistency. Um, We've had some pretty good games, but it just felt like we weren't putting all the pieces together for a full 40 minutes. So that's kind of what we've been talking about and just cleaning up all the little things like turnovers, um, rebounding, and then just taking away the other team's transition points has been a struggle recently. So we cleaned a lot of that up um, against Oregon on Sunday. So yeah, we're just going to continue to keep getting better. Can't wait to watch it. I've actually been wanting to talk to you since you joined OSU early as a senior in high school last year. It was a big story. I'm sure you've talked about it quite a bit, but you jumped right in. I talked to your coach and he said that you were immediately like absorbing the game plan, ready to go. How do you think that decision helped you this year? Yeah, it definitely gave me a lot of experience going into my freshman year and just learning how detailed college basketball is and all the game plans and stuff that you just really don't think about in high school. So to get Um, a step on that a year ahead was super special. Um, I definitely have a different role this year. Uh, So last year was more of, you know, off the ball. I could just catch and shoot, you know, a lot of attention was on Aaliyah. So this year getting um, more attention from defenses uh, has been a little bit different, but just watching Aaliyah do it and having her kind of as a mentor and getting just more time and more games in was definitely a really good experience and it helped me a lot. Um, How tough is it to compete every week in the Pac-12 versus what you thought, you know, coming in last year. What is it actually like knowing that anybody can beat you any given night? Yeah, I mean, like you said, anyone can win any game. It's a super tough conference. I obviously knew that coming in, but just to experience like every game you have to give it your all or, you know, there's upsets happening every weekend. Um, Anyone can beat anyone. So you just have to be on your game. And so that's definitely different from like high school or AU where you're not always playing the greatest competition. So it's, it's really fun. And I do really enjoy like getting to compete uh, every week with my team. Not easy to win in Eugene. We talked about that. Stanford comes to you guys in Corvallis this Friday. What did you learn the first time you played them? And what do you need to do to be the first Pac-12 team to beat them? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing for us is just eliminating eliminating their transition offense. You know, they're one of the best in the country at that. Um, So we definitely need to go do a better job at that and then shutting them down in the post and just handling their pressure defense. They kind of turned us over a lot in that game. So we know what adjustments adjustments we need to make, and we're feeling pretty confident going into this weekend. A lot of people love watching your game because you're really versatile. You can take it to the rim. You have a great shot from the outside, the pull-up jumper. When do you think your game grew the most and where does that scoring mentality, that aggression come from? Um, I think I've always kind of have it. I've always been a scorer. And, um, growing up, I was like really tall. I was always the biggest on my team, but I was still playing point guard. So just always having that mentality and being a point guard, but still knowing that I can use my size inside and um, my strength just to kind of get into people's bodies. Um, And just, yeah, being a versatile scorer has always been something that I focused on, being able to score all three levels. So I've been working on that a lot this year. So you were like a point center growing up. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What's your favorite move on the floor? I would say just hitting threes behind screens, something I work on a lot if anyone goes over or goes under the screen. Um, That's definitely a shot that I've been hitting a lot this year and so making defenders go over kind of opens up more on the court um so yeah anytime a defender goes under I know what the read is and what to do 
danger. I love it. Um, before we get to your dad and his Super Bowl career, you're from Pasco, Washington. I saw you tweet about that 509 area code after the Super Bowl win for the LA Rams. Um, were you able to tune in to that Super Bowl win? Obviously, Cooper Cup, the Yakima native. How cool was it to see him win Super Bowl MVP? Yeah, I was able to catch the end on um, that big play he made. But yeah, it's just super cool. I've known who he was since high school, um, watching him play at Davis. He, I watched him play against Richland when I was really young because um, that's where my sisters went. So I've just always known about him. He's a super hard worker. Obviously, like not a lot of offers coming out of high school went to Eastern. So just that whole storyline is incredible. And he's just such an awesome dude. So yeah, it made me really happy to see that. And then obviously being from the 509, that was pretty cool. Yeah, Tri-Cities area. Um, a lot of your family is also in Hawaii. Your dad, Kimo, uh, pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, Kimo. Kimo. Um, played 15 years in the NFL, a lot with the Pittsburgh Steelers, won a Super Bowl. How are you two alike? And what, do you guys talk after games? What are those conversations like? Um, yeah, he's definitely pretty hard on me and always pushes me to be better. So I kind of get that um, mentality from him of never settling um, and always just wanting to work harder and do better. Um, and fix everything uh, after every game so yeah but I also get that from my mom too she was a college athlete so they both have just always pushed me my whole life and my older sisters that's kind of where I get my competitiveness from just always competing with them growing up so I definitely grew up in an environment that was always just like very hardworking and always wanted to be better and tell me about your mom what did she do in college and then your older sisters athletic wise sports wise you guys just go head to head all the time yeah, my mom played basketball at the University of Hawaii, but she was like, she's in the Washington Hall of Fame for like three sports. She was just like a crazy wow. athlete um, coming out of high school. But yeah, and then both my sisters played basketball as well. So it's just, we're all very competitive, um, not even just in sports, like game night, like everything, like we're just <laughs> super competitive. Um, so that's definitely been a big part of where I am today. And you can love each other at the end of it because you have right, to right. family. Um, can we talk about Oregon State practices? Because when you look at your roster, you have teammates that are 6'3", 6'4", 6'6", and 6'9". That sounds like zero fun to go against, but it also probably sharpens you. You're a great finisher in the lane. What is practice like going against that length? Yeah, for sure. Like you said, finishing the lane seems a lot easier once you get in games because um, you're not going up against, you know, Kennedy and Yelena down low blocking shots. Um, so I've, it's definitely improved my pull up game because I know that it's kind of dangerous <laughs> near the rim during practice. But yeah, it's just it's amazing to have that kind of versatility on our team and to play against it every day. Um, we have, yeah, just a lot of size and length and that kind of bothers people. So to have that every day. Um, it's a big advantage going into games. What's your favorite part about this team? Do you guys have some jokesters or is it, you know, going to, to team dinners, traveling? What? Give us a little insight into the Oregon State Beavers. Yeah, just every time we're all together. I mean, we're all best friends. We're super close. We all like hang out multiple times a week, just like everyone gets together or if we're, someone's going to dinner after practice, like we'll just announce it in the locker room and then we all come. <laughs> Um, it's a super fun group. It's the closest team I've ever been a part of, and we all just really get along and love each other. So, yeah, it's just an amazing group to be a part of. Well, that is huge, especially as you guys close out this season. Hopes of the NCAA tournament and beyond and making a run. That was obviously your guys' hope last year. What kind of emotions from that last season um, and the way that it finished motivate you this year in the Pac-12 tournament and the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think it just gave us a taste of um, how good we could be and we can play with the best teams. Um, obviously, it was tough playing a one seed in the second round. Um, so we kind of got a bad draw with that. But, you know, we played them close and watching the game, we got a lot of good shots and we just weren't hitting them. Um, so we've just learned from that and grown going into this year. So we know that once we get in the tournament, we like our chances against anyone. And I think a lot of people like your chances at the end of a season. You guys continue to improve. Good luck against Stanford this week, and we will look forward to seeing you at the Pac-12 tournament. Thank you. I appreciate it.